This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 217. Seven Big Benefits of Blending. Five Shocking But Healthy Foods You Can Safely Put in Your Blender and Does Blending Destroy Fiber? Part two by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, reading you some of the most popular health and fitness blogs out there with permission from the authors, of course. Now, as a reminder, today is a continuation from yesterday. I started reading this article on Monday's episode, but it's on the longer side, so I'm finishing it up today. If you're new here or just bouncing around, definitely check out episode 216. That's episode 216 first. Otherwise, this won't make a lot of sense. So with that, let's hear part two of the post and continue optimizing your life. Seven Big Benefits of Blending, Five Shocking But Healthy Foods You Can Safely Put in Your Blender, and Does Blending Destroy Fiber? Part two by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. Five Shocking But Healthy Foods You Can Safely Put in Your Blender and Your Body Continued. Three, broccoli stems. If you want more broccoli for your buck, then don't throw away those stems. Broccoli stems have a fantastic mild sweet flavor and are much higher in fiber than the florets, the other green part of the broccoli. You can also toss in the broccoli stem leaves, which are actually a richer source of beta carotene than the stem or the florets. Although broccoli's florets are indeed rich in B-complex vitamins and minerals, the stem contains other compounds you don't get in the florets, which can help protect from certain types of cancer and improve immunity. And tossing the stems into a blender is much more pleasant than gnawing them whole. Four, flax seeds. Flax seeds' health benefits come from the fact that it's both high in fiber and omega-3 fatty acids, as well as phytochemicals called lignans. Just a single tablespoon of ground flaxseed contains two grams of polyunsaturated fatty acids, including omega-3 fatty acids, two grams of fiber, and 37 calories, making it a very nutrient-dense seed. Flaxseed can be used to improve digestive health and relieve constipation, and it may also help reduce your risk of heart disease. However, whole flaxseed can pass through your intestine completely undigested, which means you won't get much of these benefits unless you grind or you blend your flax seeds. And this is also why you may see little flax visitors in the toilet after you go poo if you're an avid flaxseed cracker or flaxseed granola fan. Sure, you could use a coffee grinder for your flax seeds, but I just toss them in the blender along with everything else. Five, your supplements. I take Capriflex when I'm any hard training phase, but will often throw in five to 10 tablets, sometimes along with a handful of amino acid tablets, into my blender to ensure I recover with lightning speed and get a hefty dose of muscle and bone healing action first thing in the morning. But doesn't blending damage fiber? So what about this idea that blending fruits and vegetables somehow damages the fiber? After all, Dr. Doug McDougall in the McDougall Plan shows a chart from the Journal of Lancet that demonstrates how fiber is damaged when you blend. In this instance, when an apple is blended, it causes the blood sugar and insulin response to that apple to rapidly rise, higher than if the apple had been eaten whole. And then the body experiences a roller coaster ride from top to lower levels. This happened to an even greater extent when the apple was juiced. The blood sugar response is an easy fix. Like I mentioned earlier, chew your smoothie. And for heaven's sake, don't make fruit smoothies. I personally consider fruit to be nature's dessert and consume the equivalent of one piece of fresh, raw fruit about once every two days, typically in the form of a slightly unripe pear or banana tossed into my smoothie. Regarding the damage to the fiber, the fact is that you actually want to damage the fiber. Between your teeth and the acid in your stomach, there's quite a bit of fiber damage happening when you consume fruits and vegetables, and the use of a blender is simply initiating that process by pre-digesting some of your food for you. The primary difference between a human cell and a plant cell is that rather than just having a permeable membrane, a plant has a protective cell wall outside its membrane, and that wall is made of cellulose. Cellulose is basically a chain of glucose molecules linked together in a tough and rigid wire mesh pattern. It's what stiffens the stems of plants and helps leaves to spread out and face the sun. The extremely rigid areas of greens, such as the spine of kale and collard, are also rich in calcium and other minerals, which are basically locked inside the cellulose. By blending, you break up these rigid cellulose chains into small, more easily digestible and absorbable materials and also increase nutrient and mineral availability. This is why my favorite button to push on the Omni Blender is the Big 60 button. It pulverizes the fiber for 30 seconds, automatically slows down briefly to remix, then speeds up again to put the finishing touches on that cellulose. 
So go ahead, damage that fiber. Blend, your body will thank you. You just listened to part two of the post titled, Seven Big Benefits of Blending, Five Shocking But Healthy Foods You Can Safely Put in Your Blender, and Does Blending Destroy Fiber? by Ben Greenfield of bengreenfieldfitness.com. Ben actually used the perfect analogy when it comes to blending your foods. It's basically like pre-digesting foods for you. Now, for someone like Ben, who is a highly trained athlete, getting the most bioavailable nutrients as fast as possible is really beneficial. But for those of us who aren't as active as Ben, and for the layperson, we actually don't wanna break down the fiber. This is partly because the fiber will help us feel more full. For most people, we tend to consume too many calories each day. For someone like Ben, who's very, very active, he probably can't get enough calories each day. And so if we blend our foods and we get rid of or break down some of that fiber, we're actually gonna feel hungry sooner. If you feel hungry sooner, you're gonna wanna eat again, and that means more calories you're consuming, calories that may not be necessary for you. So when I'm working with patients or clients, I actually want them to consume their foods in the most whole form as possible so that they can get that extra fiber in their diets. When we study the average American, what we're finding is the average adult will only get about 12 grams of fiber per day. The recommendation is actually to get about 25 grams of fiber per day. So we're getting about half of what we really should. And so this is why when I'm working with non-athletes especially, I don't want to encourage them to start to try and break down the fiber in their foods. I want their bodies to go through that because it's gonna make them feel full longer. It's not gonna cause that blood sugar spike that Ben mentioned. So again, it kind of goes back to this idea that I've said before. You wanna find what's right for you. If you're a highly trained athlete, using Ben's methods may be perfect. But if you're not, definitely take a step back and consider whether blending is right for you and your goals. Now before I go, If you enjoy this show, I ask you one thing, share it with someone today. The easiest way to do that will be to show that someone how to subscribe on a smartphone. A lot of people still don't know what a podcast is or how to subscribe, so if you can show someone that likes audiobooks or narration and you think they would like the show, it'd be great if you could share it with them. It's one of the easiest things you can do to show us support and that you like what you hear. All right, that'll do it for today. I'll be back tomorrow with a post from JC Dean. So definitely come back for that where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism, from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.